All right, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. First off, give our praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakar Kadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are enduring in truth and sincerity, all the men, the women, and the children who follow. So, uh, as you can see, this lesson is entitled Exposing the Lie. All right, going into the origins of, uh, you know, this image right here that they put up, um, we'll call him Jesus Christ, you know, and how basically going into how the lie was concocted in the transition from the dark image of our Lord Yahweh Shai into the so called white image of Jesus Christ. All right, and Lord's well, this is edifying. So, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is from this from Wikipedia. This is titled Salvatore Mundi from Leonardo da Vinci. So Salvatore Mundi is Latin for Savior of the World. It's a painting attributed in whole or in part to the Italian High Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci, dated 1499 to 1510. And it's important that we keep this date in mind. We have to keep these dates in mind because they all line up to about the same period. And this is just uh, for for fact's sake, for truth's sake. Okay? Go ahead. Long thought to be a copy of a long, of a lost original veiled with overpainting. It was rediscovered, restored, and included in a major exhibition of Leonardo's work at the National Gallery in London in 2011 and 2012. Auction House Christie stated just after selling the work in 2017 that most leading scholars consider it to be an original work by Leonardo. But this attribution has been disputed by other leading specialists, some of whom propose that he only contributed certain elements, and others who believe that the extensive damage prevents a definitive attribution. The painting depicts Jesus Christ in an anachronistic blue Renaissance dress, making the sign of the cross with his right hand, while holding a transparent, non-refracting crystal orb in his left, sin signaling his role as, as Salvatore Mundi, and representing the celestial sphere of the heavens. Approximately 30 copies and variations of the work by pupils and followers of Leonardo has been identified. Right, right. So I wanted him to get that part right there because it's very important that we understand the process that was done in making these paintings. So you would have Leonardo uh, da Vinci and he would be like basically like leading a class, a workshop if you will. And he would be drawing a picture or painting the picture, and he would have his students copying that same picture, drawing out that same picture, basically, you know, learning how to uh, become a, a good artist. So that's why you have varying uh, pictures, varying images of uh, Jesus Christ, I'll say. But, uh, and they all look similar, but they may be different. And they all look similar because it's all based off of one man. This man, Cesare Bogia. Now, this is one of the only other known pictures of Cesare. There's a few, but this is the most uh, known one, I'll say. And this one is actually from the year 1513. He died in 1507. So this is after he died. And you can see the... Uh, the likeness between this picture and this picture which you know is a good chance that he probably looked closer to this than to this that, yeah. number one he's dead mm -hmm. you know and he's not modeling for this picture Connor. number two it's Leonardo mm -hmm. you know he's you know for what he was you know what I'm saying he, he was one of the best artists of all time so it's probably pretty accurate okay so let's go into uh, we know that about the uh, the debauchery the the low levelness of uh, this guy if you don't know about it you can easily look up all the information um, I do want to go we are going to go a little bit into it but we, we want to get you know the, 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 the meat off the bone you know 
how did how did this become the image of our Lord? Right? So uh yeah, so this is from uh Narland.com and I'll put the link in the description and of course you know it's titled the the homosexual incestual greedy man who Christians have portrayed who it's like who Christians have portraits of at home. But uh, we're gonna jump down jump down to um Matter of fact, hold on. Before you, before we go into this, uh, let's get Revelation 11 and uh, 8. Con, this is Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. It says, and their dead bodies show. Wait, Sakia. We're going to wait on this one. We're going to wait on this one. Let's get 2 Corinthians 11 and 4. Con, 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 4. For if he that cometh preacheth another Yahabashai, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Yeah, man. So if you come preaching another Yahabashai, you know, receiving another spirit, there's only one Yahabashai. There's only one Savior, one name that we can call on. Alright? <clears throat> so when when you make a image, you know, like this, this is another Yahweh Shai. This is Jesus. This isn't Yahweh Shai. This is Jesus. Okay? So I just wanted to go a little bit into the study guide um, on this as well. Now starting at D. Starting at D. Okay, so, highlighting for if he who comes preaches another Yahweh Shai, it says, it is important that the Corinthian Christians understand and trust Paul's apostolic credentials because Paul knows they are attracted to the false apostles who preach another Yahweh Shai. The troublemakers among the, the Corinthian Christians who stirred up contention against Paul didn't only attack Paul, they also attacked the true Yahweh Shai by preaching another Yahweh Shai. Right, so even back then, you know, in the, the early, you know, probably like, 50 AD, 60 AD, you know, and that's probably even too late, you know, but uh, in those times, they were they were preaching uh, other messiahs, I'll say, speaking of other people outside of our Lord. It says, who was this other Yahweh Shai? Because of the way the Corinthian Christians despised Paul's image of weakness and unimpressive appearance. The other Yahweh Shai was probably one who knew no weakness, persecution, humiliation, suffering, or death. A super Yahweh Shai is, is another Yahweh Shai, not the real Yahweh Shai. And another Yahweh Shai cannot save. Right, so even back then they were building up in, this, in their mind the image of, you know, I'll say a super Jesus. Not Yahweh Shai, not someone who... Uh, came in lowly on a donkey and you know took the stripes took the beating took the humiliation and the persecution that our Lord did all right Paul himself uh, had a thorn in his side he you know he had ailments you know he wasn't that that uh pristine picture that I would say of of health or you know uh, uh uh, a masculine man, not to say that he was feminine, but you know what I mean, like a a bodybuilder, you know, uh, um, a, a specimen of a man, I'll say, if that makes sense. But they take that weakness as okay, well, he's weak, and his Lord's weak. Oh, well, there's got to be somebody better out here, kind of deal. And that's really what's going on. And fast forward in these times in the 1500s, they're looking for. Uh, another Jesus. I said another Yahweh Shai, but a Jesus. They're looking for um, someone to put up to be a great white hope, and you'll see why why we say that to be a great white hope. So let's get into this. We'll start because um, we want to build his character to be that great white hope. We ain't got to build it; it's already built. But um, start right here, brother. It says, Cesare envied his brother's position, and many scholars believe he envied it so much that he had his own brother assassinated in order to obtain the office. 
Other records show the brothers slept with the same mistress, the wife of their younger brother, uh, uh, Goffredo. Many believe the inflamed love triangle between the brothers and their so-called mistresses is what led to young Giovanni's demise. Following Giovanni's assassination, Cesare Borgia res resigned his position as cardinal and became captain general of the papacy military. During the time, Salakia, during this time, the Catholic Church was waging war on Islam, and Cesare was about to play a vital role in the history of the church. Right. So, going back to what I was saying about, uh, you know, the 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 super Jesus, in that time, Cesare had a, um, he had a reputation about him. You know, he was feared. He had led battles. He uh, was a good swordsman. He had murdered people. He had poisoned people. So he had that that uh, allure about him. Go ahead. Oh, Saki. So it speaks about um, the Catholic Church raising raging war on Islam. Okay. So when you go into these times, just remember, um, this is the time of. Pope Alexander the Sixth. So, matter of fact, let's uh, pull him up real quick. So he his papacy began, you know, August of fourteen ninety two. What else was going on in fourteen ninety two? You know, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. In 1492 so he's coming over to the new world okay it says that his papacy ended in 1503 so in this 11 year period of time it's a lot that went on including the Ottoman Venetian War now it's the reason why it's not the Ottoman Italian War is because let me see, get my images right Italy was broken up into different city states, so it wasn't one united country. You had the Kingdom of Naples, okay, you had the Papal States, Venice, Milan, Florence, all these were independent city states with their own kings, their own rulers, you know, doing their own thing. All still Italian people, and all still it Italians, but, um, separated okay kind of like how when um, America was being uh, first quote discovered by the people from the new land and you had uh, like the British colonies and you had the Spanish colonies and the French had their area and it's still one country but everybody was doing their own thing like self government yeah so that's kind of what's going on in these times. Everybody's doing their own thing. Okay. So just to give you an idea on what's going on. Um, the Ottomans were, of course, uh, Muslims. Okay. So here's a picture of the Ottoman Empire. All right. Which we're going to go into just for, uh, matter of fact, read. Huh. Read the first sentence. It says, At the time, the Muslims had successfully made their way to Germany and taken control of Turkey. Kind of. So, here is a picture of the Ottoman Empire. All right, this is Turkey right here, and it was already taken over. They had already moved west into Greece and into uh, all the, the Balkans, all these lands over here. And Italy is right here, so it's right across the way. This is Venice. Venice is at the top. As you can see, here are the Balkans. Okay. So, the Venetian Ottoman War. All this over here is occupied by the Ottomans. As well as, you know, down south. Uh, at the time, you know, Jerusalem was under Muslim... Uh, occupation you also have 
uh, continues that's shown on this map. But in Spain, you had the Moors in Spain who were uh, exiled by King Ferdinand and uh, I think her name was Isabella. The, and they're the ones who also financed Christopher Columbus. So those Moors who were uh, kicked out of Spain, they had to go elsewhere. So, you know, where would they go? They, of course, they went into Africa and they went into other parts of Europe. Okay. Uh, go ahead, keep reading. This threatened the church's stronghold over the empire. During the same period, the image of Jesus. Slack you, slack you. Remember, the Ottoman War was between 1499 and 1503, sitting right in, uh, in our target area that we want to go to prove these facts. Right in that 1492 to 1507 uh, era, era, 1510 era. All right. Uh, so it says this threatened the church's stronghold over the over the empire. During the same period, the image of Jesus, or I say Yahweh Shai, was similar to that of a Muslim, and the church was having a hard time selling its ideologies in the region. Right, so you had a um, a Catholic church who most of its members at this time are Edomites, or so-called white people. But the images were still of the the dark Israelites whom uh, who it's supposed to be, right? You you have the the dark image of Yahweh Shai, the dark images of the twelve, David, Moses, so on and so forth. So they're they're preaching, you know, so called Christianity to their people, but the 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 images that they're conveying looks like the images of the people whom they don't want, who they're trying to discredit. So, if they're trying to discredit Islam and, you know, go to war with Islam, but the images that they're pushing to, to, to uh, vindicate themselves look like the enemy. So, th it's a conflict of interest there. Go ahead. Some say they devised a plan to correct this issue and use Chazray Borgia as his tool. Consequently, some historians say the Pope came up with a plan to have every painting of the original Messiah destroyed. Next, Alexander VI commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to reinvent Yahweh Shai in the image of his own beloved son, Chazray Borgia. This completely... Right, right. And if... If... Um, Chazray... His beloved son is, you know, the savior is Yahweh Shai. Who would that make, you know, Alexander the Sixth? That would make him God. And we know Esau has a God complex. Okay, we know that you know he sees he sits as the, at the seat of God as he is God. You know, kind of. Uh, butchered that, but you understand what I'm saying, Lord, as well. You know, he wants to be that dude. Go ahead. This completely disassociated the whites of the empire from the Muslims they had to fight, making it easier to kill their enemies in good conscience. Yeah, man, it just makes everything easier. Okay. Um. Keep keep reading. Go ahead. Between 1502 and 1503, Borgia employed Leonardo da Vinci as a military architect and engineer, in which him and Leonardo da Vinci became intimate instantaneously. So this is putting them two together right in that timeline, because when we go back to um, the portrait of the Salvador Mundi, it was made between 1499 and 1510. Around the same time, he was with Cesare. Proving that this image, you know, is Cesare, and you know that they had a uh, working relationship, and probably even a uh, intimate relationship. To express his love towards Cesare, Leonardo painted many pictures of him. 
Cesare's father, Rodrigo Borgia, who later became Pope Alexander VI under the authority of the Catholic Church elite, had his son picture put up as Jesus Christ in the Western world. Right, so, like I said, um, you had King Ferdinand uh, sign off, or France, or like it, King Ferdinand and I believe it's Isabella sign off on Christopher Columbus going over there. You also had, they had to get permission from the Pope as well, and he signed off on it. So, if if people they know because they brought back slaves, they brought back uh, Native American or, and Taino Indian slaves from the quote New World. So they knew they had people over there, and if they're wanting to push their doctrine, they know who they're pushing it to. They knew that those were the true people of God because he went over there with what with Hebrew interpreters. So they couldn't go over there with the dark images and preach to them about how they are, you know, it just didn't work. It's a conflict of interest again. So everything is lining up in this period of time to put, to put up uh, Tesere as Jesus to, to push not only in Europe, okay, to keep their, their, um, their farce going, but also in these new lands, we have to let them know that, hey, look, we're God, not you, because if you push those same dark images over there and try to come down on them, you're like, well, this, this looks like us, it don't even look like you, motherfucker. So, this is how the lie is being concocted. Alright, um... There's more information that we got about Leonardo da Vinci and being, you know, homosexual. We're not going to go into all of that. I'll put the link in the description. But, you know, just to, to cross-reference, cross -re cross -reference, you know, these two articles. Because uh, it made a statement about them being lovers and uh, being him, uh, him, uh, Cesare Bogia, being homosexual. Um, I believe he was. And if you read the second article, it shows, you know, he pretty much was. But going back to what we were saying before, we can get this Revelation uh, 11 and 8 now. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8, it says, And their dead body shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Yeah, what's that great city that's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt? It's America, all right? And their dead bodies is representing the the minds of the people. All right, spiritually, the people are dead, man. In America, GMO foods and uh, uh, everybody's mesmerized by looking at their fucking phone and just drinking Esau's Kool Aid, man. So, man, these people are dead. All right. But it says also where our Lord was crucified. He is crucified by putting up, you know, these images. That's how he was exed out. That's how they were able to take over. All right, because we know what the scripture says. Uh, go ahead, get that. Start at one and then jump down. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1 yeah yeah um, something that you said was a, a very good point um, you know pretty much how they when they put up these images you know it makes it easier to uh, it makes it easier for them to pretty much kill off the individuals that don't look like that image yeah. you know and, and going that's a, a Yaakov precept that you uh, pulled out with the Revelation 18 uh, 11 and 8 you know, um, because nowadays our, our people, they truly, most of our people believe that's him. So when Esau wants to come down, well, we, we know he doesn't have any remorse anyway, but it just, it, like you mentioned, it, it all fits. It all comes full circle. There's nothing new under the sun. Esau is doing the same thing today as he was 
before. You know, being the ultimate deceiver, deceiving the whole entire world, uh, which, um, which the information that the brother brought out, um, you know, about the Mo you know, them going to war with the Moors. You know, these are, uh, they, they know who the Lord's people are. So that, that is their main objective to make sure we deceive them niggas first. You know, uh, uh, just, you know, frankly speaking, and it's no different today, man, you know. But, you know, you got some, you got it, brother, some other. Uh, your PowerPoint. Uh, so Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach was the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Right, the, the revealing of Yahweh Shai Mashiach is going to reveal unto us. That's what the word revelation means, to reveal. Okay, it's going to reveal to us uh, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Right, so jump down to uh, 13. Uh, verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Hold on, hold on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. This, this does not look like that, man. This looks like this. Because it is truly an imposter. Looks like it. It says, His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. Yeah, man, he was a dark skinned man. God, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Yeah, man. So that's that's the image of the true Messiah, Yahweh Shai, whom we look forward to. Not th not this guy right here, all right, and not this guy right here or right here or right here or any of these other, you know, as the scripture said, you know, uh, uh, another Jesus, all right. So, um, matter of fact, we can uh, we can go ahead and get this wisdom, of Solomon, or this wisdom, yeah, fourteen. We're gonna start at um, start at verse eight. Wisdom of Solomon fourteen and eight. But that which is made with hands is cursed, as well it as he that made it. Right. So, this right here, these images, they're paintings. They're made with hands. All right, and there's nothing wrong with putting up or using the image because we use the image, but we don't worship the image. We don't. Uh, we we say it's a depiction, a description of what the Lord would look like. They're saying that this is a picture of the Lord. This is what He looks like. That's the difference. It says he because he made it, and it because being corruptible it was called God. For the that's plain. God. That's plain, because this is corruptible. Making a painting is corruptible at the end of the day. Like I said, we don't worship any images. We don't worship the image of God. You know, an actual drawing or painting. We use it. To teach, so that we can uh, use it in contrast to you know the other white meat. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto the Most High. Yeah, man, the Most High, he's gonna come back with wrath and vengeance for this shit, man. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Therefore. Even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation. Because in the creature of the Most High there become an abomination and stumbling blocks to the souls of men and a snare to the feet of the unwise. This is a stumbling block. This is a stumbling block to our people and a snare to our people. Because as the brother said, they really believe that this is the Lord. They really, and if you believe that this is the Lord, then the, the, the men of the Lord. The, the people of the Lord 
are so-called white people. So it automatically, fuck it, it automatically gives them the leg up. So, uh, slide. Here, read 12. Okay. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Life is corrupted because of this shit, man. From 1500 to, to 1970, man, everything was corrupted. We didn't, we, you know, we had this image to look to as our savior. We didn't know. And F A, most of us couldn't even read or write. So we couldn't go get the information for ourselves. We had to take their word for it. Life was corrupted. But through the spirit of grace and the power of Yahweh by Shem Yashai, you know, starting with the, 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 the elders and the uh, older apostles and the bishops, King Masha, uh, you know, all the, the great men, who started this thing, okay, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai, we are able to know who we are. We're able to do these lessons and bring out this information from the deceiver. Uh, matter of fact, we got to get that before we go. The deceiver uh, and the deceived. Uh, you got Job, it? Con. This is Job chapter 12 and verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Yeah, man. So we know who the deceiver are, but a lot of our people are deceived. And if you don't want to wake up, if you ain't got the the uh, the diligence to just read for yourself and see that this man is piece of, is a piece of shit, then I mean, you kind of deserve what you get. Kind of. This is uh, the book of Job 9 verse 4. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges. Thereof. Yeah, I man, he covered the faces of the judges, man. And this is how he does it. He had, you know, a homosexual paint up his lover as as the, the, the Lord. And, you know, his daddy commissioned it because he had the power to do so. It says, if not, where and who is it? Uh -huh. uh, you know, based on that statement that you made, you know, pretty much because the evidence, the evidence is right there in front of our faces. You know what Esau has been doing, changing the images of the, the true Messiah. Uh, you know, link, which links into the, the nation of Israel. The, you know, the, the, the JEWs, the true JEWs. Uh, but you know, hey, that the scriptures say they have eyes but uh, see not, ears and they perceive not. You know, roughly paraphrasing. You know. But it says, if not, where and who is it? Like, because the evidence is there. You know, what more do you need? You know, it's just, hey, that that goes into that Isaiah 29, the most high blinded them. That they, you know, um, and also gave them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You know, so, hey, you know, you know I, just want, I just want to land back off, of, off of your statement. I, but, yeah, that, that's, that's it to that. Yeah, I mean, that's all I really wanted to get into. Anybody else get anything as a final statement? Alright, so with that being said, you know, we've all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, or Karkadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of GMS, salutes and honors to the elect, all the brothers across the four corners who are during in truth and sincerity, the men, the women, and the children who follow. Shalom. Shalom.